Good evening. Welcome to the regular selectmen's meeting for Tuesday, May 28th, 2019. Uh, all the selectmen are here except for Selectman Ed Gineer, the town manager, the town clerk, and two people from our water department today. Yay. Oh, and one of our town employees. <laughs> uh, please stand with me and salute the flag. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> the next order of business is the approval of the May 14th minutes. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes as presented. I'll second it. Any discussion? All those in favor? And one abstention. One abstention. Um, this brings us to our first public comment. Uh, the public comment is 15 minutes long. If you have a comment, please step to the podium. Give your name and where you live. Going one, going twice. No public comment. And that brings us to the public hearing for the June 11th, 2019 election. Let's see. And I was told I have to read this out. So let's get doing it. Um, I'll go through the uh, different articles, read them out. We only got 46 of them. 44 of them is uh, and I'll try to be fast, but concise. Um, article 1 is to elect the moderator. Article 2, to elect by secret ballot one selectman and one school board member. Article 3, shall the town vote to adopt the proposed amendments to the land use ordinance? The board of selectmen recommends a yes vote of three to nothing. Article 4, shall the town adopt proposed amendments to the land use ordinance regarding adult use marijuana. Article 5. Shall the town vote to adopt the proposed amendments to the littering and animal waste ordinance. Article 6. Shall the town vote to use up to $2,714,355 from estimated revenues to reduce the amount to be <coughs> raised by taxation for fiscal year 2019-20 2019 20, which begins July 1st, 2019. Article 7. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $304,981 for the general expense account for the fiscal year 2019? Article 8. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $389,333 for the town administration account for the fiscal year. Article 9. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $282,342 for the clerk, town clerk account for the fiscal year. <clears throat> Article 10. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $124,759 for the plan and ordinance account for the fiscal year. Article 11. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $113,153 for the assessor's office account for the fiscal year. Article 12. Shall the, shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $154,850 for the town hall account for the fiscal year. Article 13. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $10,000 for the general assistance account for fiscal year. Article 14. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $1,721,149 for the police department account for the fiscal year. Article 15. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum 
of $969,414 for the fire department account for the fiscal year. Article 16. <clears throat> Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $980,526 for the public works account for the fiscal year? Article 17. Shall the town vote to authorize the expenditure of all revenues received from the State of Maine Urban Rural Initiative Program for fiscal year 2019-20 for road improvements as authorized by the program with unspent balances to be carried forward each year? Article 18, shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $450,250 for the refuse disposal account for the fiscal year. <clears throat> Article 19, shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $132,342 for the recreation account for the fiscal year. Article 20. Shall the town vote to appropriate the sum of $92,855 for debt service to cover this appropriation for fiscal year 2019-20, which begins July 1st, 2019, and as authorized by the passage of Article 31 and 32 at the 2016 Annual Town Meeting. Article 21. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $24,450 for the community agency appropriations account for the fiscal year? Article 22. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate, appropriate the sum of $196,388 for the annual fire protection cost for the fiscal year? <coughs> Article 23. So the town vote to appropriate the sum of $250,000 from unassigned fund balance for fiscal year 2019-20 and authorize its use for road, bridge, sidewalk construction and repairs as well as town parking lots and public ways and including expenses for curbing, drainage and engineering fees when required with the funds to be used in, conjunc in conjunction with the State of Maine Urban Rural Initiative Program with unspent balances to be carried forward each year. <clears throat> Article 24. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $350,000 for, for its use for road, bridge, and sidewalk construction and repairs, as well as town parking lots and public ways, and including expenses for curbing, drainage, and engineering fees when required, with the funds to be used in conjunction with the State of Maine Urban Rural Initiative Program with the unspent balances to be carried forward each year. Article 25. Shall the town vote to appropriate the sum of $34,000 from the Lena Clark Trust account for the purpose of continuing the electrical upgrades necessary at the town hall and place this amount into the town building capital reserve account for fiscal year 2019-20 with unspent balances to be carried forward each year until fully expen expended. <clears throat> Article 26. Shall the town vote to appropriate the sum of $30,000 to purchase, purchase an access control system for the town hall and public works garage and place this account into the town building capital reserve account for fiscal year 2019-20 with unspent balances to be carried forward each year until fully expended. Article 27. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $23,000 as the first lease payment for the purchase of two new police cruisers for fiscal year 2019-20 and place this amount into the police capital equipment account established for this purpose with unspent balances to be carried forward each year until fully expender, expended and authorize the Board of Selectmen to enter into a lease purchase agreement on terms it deems appropriate with a balance to be repaid over a period of no longer than five years. Article 28. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $35,000 for the purchase of a stainless steel dump body to prolong the life of a 2,000 plow truck for fiscal year 2019-20 
and place this amount into the Public Works Capital Vehicle Account established for this purpose with unspent balances to be carried forward each year until fully expended. Article 29. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $37,000 for fiscal year 2019-20 and authorize its use to continue addressing storm drainage system outfall issues identified by the main DEP during an audit of the town's stormwater drainage system and place this amount into the planning capital reserve account established for this purpose with unspent balances to be carried forward each year until fully expended. Article 30. So the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $213,160 in interest and principal for debt service in fiscal year 2019-20 as authorized by the passage of Article 5 at the November 6, 2018 election. Article 31. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $21,634 for debt service in fiscal year 2019-20 as authorized by passage of Article, 30, Article 37 at the 1997 annual town meeting. <coughs> Article 32, shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the thumb sum of $10,000 and authorize the Board of Selectmen to hold it in a contingency account and to use it to meet unanticipated expenses and emergencies that, occur, that might occur during the fiscal year 2019-20 with unspent balances to be carried forward each year. <coughs> Article 33, Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $109,000 as a contribution to the Berwick Library Association for fiscal year 2019-20? Article 34. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $24,000 for the Federal Stormwater Program for fiscal year 2019-20 and place this amount into the account established for this purpose with unspent balances to be carried forward each year until fully expended. Article 35, shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $15,000 for economic development purposes for fiscal year 2019-20 and place this amount into the account established for this purpose with unspent balances to be carried forward each year until fully expended. Article 36, shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $1,000 for emergency management for fiscal year 2019-20 and place this amount into the account established for this purpose with unspent balances to be carried forward each year until fully expended. <coughs> Article 37, shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $90,000 for SCBA personal protective gear, mobile radio, AIS heart monitor, and Verta V100 simulator for fiscal year 2019-20, and place this amount into the account established for this purpose with unspent balances to be carried forward each year until fully expended. Article 38. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $20,000 for fiscal year 2019-20 and four consecutive fiscal years following for fuel tank replacement at Public Works as required by the DEP? Article 39. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $5,600 ,600 for customer service window replacement for fiscal year 2019-20. Article 40. <clears throat> Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $15,000 for the unfunded liabilities account for fiscal year 2019-20 and place this amount in the account established for this purpose with unspent balances to be carried forward each year until fully expended. Article 41. Shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $25,000 for fiscal year 2019-20 and consecutive fiscal years for granting matching funds to be placed into this account and carried forward each year. 
Article 42, shall the town vote to authorize the use of interest money from the Lena Clark Trust Fund interest account when there are major repairs or maintenance needs at the town hall. Article 34, uh, 43, getting dyslexic here. <laughs> Shall the town vote to charge interest on unpaid taxes at a rate of 8% per annum and to set the date when taxes committed for fiscal year 2019 to 2020, <clears throat> July 1st, 2019 through June 30th, 2020, and become due and payable as October 14th, 2019, and April 16th, <coughs> 2020, with said interest to be collected after October 15th, 2018, and April 17th, 2020, and allow the tax collector to accept prepayment of taxes prior to the tax commitment date. Article 44, shall the town vote to set an interest rate of 4% as allowed by state law to be the rate to be paid to taxpayers who pay amounts in excess of amounts finally assess and authorize any such interest paid or abatements granted to be charged against the annual overlay. Those are the articles. Um, if there's any public comment, step to the uh, podium and uh, ask away. We'll see if we can answer. I don't have a question. I just have a comment. Um, Nicole Fecto, Wingate Lane, Berwick, and I'm on the planning board. And I wanted to thank the selectmen for supporting the land use ordinance amendments that we have worked very hard on at the planning board and proposed to you, and I, we appreciate it. That is all. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment, questions, annoyances? Oh, annoyances got somebody up. <laughs> yeah, this may not be a, a great question. Um, so I see two things that are related to the MS4 stormwater outfall in here. Can you explain why there's two things <clears throat> Uh, to be voted on for that particular, uh, for the federal stormwater program? One of them is for the contract that we have with Southern Maine Planning and Development for uh, the uh, engineer, Chris, Christine. Uh, and the other is for uh, the funding for uh, design or building of uh, a specific project, which we are. Those are the MS4 along the Salmon Falls River. Um, yes, the, the ones that we've started working on. Uh, project, that they're in the design phase. Yeah. Um, in three phases, we have enough money this year to do part of it. And then uh, this other funding will cover um, th this coming year, what we have. So it's a full year project to, uh, to for design. Okay. And so good way to look at it then is the actual work the town crew is doing on some of the outfalls and then the SMPDC Part of it is is diff it's on a different warrant then. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I don't think the town crew does it though. No, the town crew does it. Goes out to bid, Paul. Goes out to bid. Like what out out last time, we put that out to bid and okay. yep. can't remember who CV got it. Maha. Yeah, somebody got CV it. CV and Maha did yeah. the engineering. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, they did the job. We yeah. put it out to bid again this year for the this, this second phase. Uh, and and uh, Malone and McGroom, McGroom got, it, got yeah. the bid. Uh, and so we actually have a meeting with them this week to go over some of the questions they have, so. Put the microphone on. No. <laughs> <laughs> Trouble. Uh -huh. um, any other questions? No? Is I will call the public hearing closed. Is, uh, it brings us down to Reports of committees, BCTV, I know Terry's in there, I don't know if she's going to be doing a, she gave a report last week. Um, Envision Berwick is, Paul, Paul, oh, Paul do you want is to there anything for Envision Berwick this week? Or? Uh, maybe bits and pieces. Yeah. <laughs> well, bits and pieces uh, is still see. information. First thing I, uh, my forgiveness is, is, yeah, is begged for not going to the last EB meeting. But uh, there are things that are percolating. One thing that I've been involved in is helping Mike Wright and Daryl Detour of Great Works Regional Land Trust tie in uh, the land that Great Works Regional Land Trust has acquired next to our sewer district uh, land and to, to kind of bring that uh, together with our Great Falls Park, which is not much has happened in the last year, but I'd like to get something going this summer on that to keep cleaning that up a little bit. 
but we would like the long-term goal to connect our Great Falls Park with this 80-something acres, the Great, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the Great, the Great, uh, Great Works, Great Works yeah. River. <laughs> too many, yeah. too many greats in right. there. <laughs> GRWLT, how's that? Um, <laughs> like to connect those two, and I, I believe the sewer district is going to help us out, kind of make a to make a trail system um, that would you know, be not only have loops in and around the Great Works piece and the sewer district piece, but maybe start working northward and connect to the Great Falls Park. It'd be one heck of a trail system. Oh, and it'd awesome. be a multi-year project. Yeah. Um, so we've been working on that, and it's going to be a slow process uh, to connect the landowners that are in there if we can get an easement to get across their land and stuff. Um, so that's one thing I'm, I'm very interested in working on. And if anyone's interested... In, in working on that project. Uh, Serena, I believe, is still, Serena Galishaw, is still interested in that, but she's out of town and she's hard to get. Right. But we could sure, sure use a little bit of work to clean up at least, uh, you know, part of it. Right. And, and keep yeah. working on it. Yeah, and that, that section of the river you're talking about is a spectacular section, you know, is uh, between the downtown I, and the sewer district. It, it's, it's funny you say that because uh, Daryl and Mike Wright, myself, were in there this last week, and I did an end-to-end -end walk from just about where we connect to the sewer district land all the way back and through the gorge that's right here downtown by the Great Falls Park. It's not an easy walk. You have to actually uh, uh, need handholds to get through some of the rocky gorge areas, so we may need an alternative for people <laughs> to maybe take First Street or something like that. But it would be a, um, be a fantastic addition to attract both hardcore and people that just want to walk by the right. river. So no one else would have that in the seacoast. It'd be a great thing. Uh, other EB things? Not by committee. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Paul. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had quite, we had quite a quite a report last week, la last meeting we had, anyways. So James was here; he filled this all in. But I figured since you're sitting here, we'll ask you, pick your brain a little bit. Thanks for so. the finger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> finger in me. I mean. yeah. <laughs> um, is uh, we have no department reports. Is we have no appointments, presentations, or other guests. Um, unfinished business. Nothing. Tell manager report. Um, after tonight, hopefully we'll award the paving bids. Uh, Public Works has been working up on uh, Pine Hill, doing a great job ditching. Uh, they've also uh, planning on getting over to Worcester Road and Lovebrook. Uh, I saw them did, over at Lovebrook today. Yeah, they were grading. Uh, just and we're going to try to uh, clean the ditches up there and get some of that material back in. Um, and I did some work over on Ridland Road last week in grading, so that's all cleaned up. Um, I gave you a uh, resolution for the person that we will uh, make public probably in the next few weeks for a Spirit of America Award. I just mm -hmm. need you to read that and say that, that looks okay. Um, and we, James and I attended a, a CATS meeting, which is a transportation group, uh, Kittery, and uh, uh, presented, and James presented a, uh, our downtown transportation or traffic study, and we're hoping that we'll get chosen to fund that. It'll be for 2022, so it's a few years out. But uh, it looks like there are several, there are three total projects being presented, and I think they could, they do it right, they can fund one or two projects and leave one out, but they not, you couldn't fund all three. They only get approximately $700,000 a year, which doesn't carry very far on road projects. So that needs to change as far as I'm concerned. But, um, otherwise, it would, uh, we have our meeting coming up, a uh, workshop on the 18th of June, and uh, we'll talk about a little bit more about that uh, because we have to move a selectman's meeting uh, for the 11th. We might incorporate both of them, but we'll be talking about a lot of uh, different things. So it'll be a good meeting. <laughs> you won't be here. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's all I have. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to jump back to the Envision Berwick. There, there is something that you know is uh, I, 
I want to talk about is last week uh, James and I and, and Steve met with J Jim Tass, I think it was, from the Bike Main Coalition. As you might have noticed that we have some uh, plastic ball odds out at crosswalks now as we were looking at you know, how to make it more pedestrian friendly and safer. And we have an awful lot of pavement out there. And we have in places we have single lane traffic with 24 feet of pavement. Yeah. When on the highway of the turnpike, you have 11 feet of travel lane. So <laughs> there's a lot that we can do. Is uh, we started with some some uh, modest, moderate, you know, improvements right now. Well, I've all already noticed a big difference in the traffic coming through. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is, um, I know and fire trucks have been through and. Public Works is concerned about their plows, but they're going to do a little <laughs> test run to get around the bump outs. But. Um, and, and the pylons that are there, they're just held down with butyl, butyl tape, so they're just temporary anyways. So Good weather. Bike riding time. Yeah. Yep. yeah so we'll, uh, we'll see. see is, uh, we talked about actually getting some more and, and trying some other things, including incorporating some parking spaces on the other side of the town hall here on Rochester Street. But where that's a state aid road, we have to ask permission, I guess. I was all ready to do it, but they weren't ready to do it. So, <laughs> it is a, um, but it, it really made a lot of difference, and uh, you know, it really delineates the crosswalks now. And uh, and one of the things we did talk about was you know for slowing traffic down even more out here is when we did the traffic study, and I asked about raised crosswalks or speed tables in the engineer jason said that they don't recommend those but jim tass said that the main dot you know approves them all the time and i think if we had a raised table out by where the subway crosswalk is and because you watch people come off the bridge and as soon as they hit the green light they start accelerating and they don't stop accelerating till they hit Wilson Street. <laughs> you know, so is uh, putting a nice speed table in there I think would slow them down a lot. So but so that's going back to Envision Broad. But it was a lot of fun playing in traffic that day. <laughs> so. Thanks, Tom. Um, Selectman's communication. I have one communication from Comcast for uh, premium channels is Cinemax will no longer be available unless you purchase it separately, but you'll be able to get, um, I don't remember which one it hits or something like that, is a, the new package. So if you have it, it there it is. It's really part of our meeting. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, well, it's I know, right? It's like with communications. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a complaint. <laughs> is, uh, <laughs> yeah, we all have complaints about the cable, but uh, that brings us to accounts payable. Let's see if I can get to them without skipping one today. We have an AP warrant, 1946, from May 16th, 2019, the amount of $75,174.29. The water warrant. 0946 for May 16th, 2019 for the amount of $6,092.07. Account payable warrant, 1947 for May 23rd, 2019 for the amount of $103,918.73. We have a water warrant. 0947 for May 23rd, 2019 for the amount of $2,332.14. <clears throat> we have a payroll warrant, 1947 for the amount for May 23rd, 2019 for the amount of $56,955.78. I'll make a motion we pay our bills. I'll second it. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. That brings us to new business. And first up is Berwick Water Department. Star Glenn, confined space policy. This is something that the Water Department's been spending a lot of time trying to 
get this squared away, and I think they've come up with a good product, along with the DOL and Department of Labor, for paying it. So, all yours. Yeah, Star Glenn is the expert, and she spent a lot of time working out the difficult issues with all the confined spaces we have at the Water Department, exactly which we can go into, in what way, and which we can't go into. And uh, she's happy to answer all your questions. <laughs> Sure. Uh, I'm Star Glenn. I work for the Water Department, Level 4 Treatment Operator. Um, I also run the safety program there, so I've spent the last five years getting our SHAPE Award um, and writing out the, the written procedures for um, confined space, rescue, and um, also the parts that go with it, like fall protection and, uh, you know, air air movement in confined spaces and uh, I've done the other programs too like respiratory protection and I can't think of any right now GIS so I wrote this program um, and they there are programs but I, I think town manager wants to make it a, a more of a policy right yep. so mostly the the confined space program I don't know if you have a copy um, but the policy in it really is pretty short. <laughs> You've got uh, the program provi is provided to protect authorized employees, which is just us, uh, the water treatment operators at the moment. Our names are in this program. Uh, nobody else can go in confined spaces in our department at the moment uh, without uh, extra training. Um, so these authorized employees that will enter confined spaces and may be exposed to hazardous atmospheres as well as other safety and health hazards. We have some hazardous, we don't really have hazardous atmospheres per se. Um, we can test for the, for the oxygen and the, uh, you know, for, for gas detector, but, uh, our spaces are underground. Uh, they're full of water. So there's certain procedures that need to be done prior to entering, uh, that, are in our lockout tag out program. So basically you lock and tag out a uh, space, a confined space, cause it, and make it like a non-permit confined space just to make it easier to work in, like removing the water or locking out valves that would allow uh, energy controls uh, in that area. So I have that all written up in here. Um, mostly it's based on the OSHA standard for confined space, 29 CFR 1910 146. I went through that uh, with a fine tooth comb and I pulled out what was um, what was pertinent to our department, tried to make it uh, easier to use. I mean, everybody wants to <clears throat> follow safety procedures, but if they're complicated and difficult, then you're probably not gonna do it. So I, I made it pretty simple. Anybody can read it and do this, but I am the uh, authorized supervisor. So I'm the entry supervisor. I'm the one that does the uh, the permit. So even though Chris is the department head, I'm I'm the SME. So I fill that out um, just because I wrote the procedure and I know know the safety precautions. Um, and the permit really tells you what you need to do for each <coughs> entry. So if I have hot work or something like that, that would be posted on the permit, and I would adjust my program. Uh, accordingly to that now those things don't come up all the time so it's um, stuff that I would add later on so I'm just concerned that when we make this a policy I want to still be able to change my procedures in it um, they are covered by OSHA I'm not gonna you, you can't just change them willy-nilly and, and the words and stuff I would have to go into the Department of Labor and OSHA and and change things but they would just be for stuff that came up like that. If I needed something extra or something breaks and we gotta do something weird, you know, that's not normal um, work in our normal work uh, orientation, um, we could take care of that without having to wait for approval from you guys. So I think maybe just having the policy that says we're going to use confined, we have a confined spaces, we're going to use them. And it's clear that if, if somebody doesn't, or if you don't follow this procedure, this program, then you will, you will probably be terminated. It's very serious. We've been following the confined space procedures anyway all along, haven't we? We have had a confined space policy that Chris wrote back in 1998. Yeah. 
but um, I rewrote it so it would be easier to understand. It was very wordy. But, yeah, so it's all up to date with the 2020. Well, we re OSHA. we replaced we put in the potassium permanganate system, and that called out uh, some issues because we can't we have always done self rescue uh, in all our spaces. Um, so you could lock it and tag it out, drain it, and just you know sniff it and say, all right, it's good to go inside. But we have self rescue equipment like a tripod and a harness, and that person that goes in the hole has to be attached. So in case something was to happen, they break their ankle, they have a heart attack, anything, Whatever. Yep. we can pull them out of the hole by cranking them up and right. do that without having, to, like we call 911 or we call the emergency services, of course, right when that happens, but we also can get them out of the hole, which can save someone's life. So, um, you know, timing is, is key. There are some couple, couple spaces like the raw water well where we put in some baffles for um, to increase our contact time with potassium permanganate that was to um, help with our manganese issue when we did that we changed the the concept in that in that area now there's cables and uh, baffles so in order to inspect or clean that area which we need to do on an annual basis you need to go off hook so in order to do that we tried to get um, an agreement with the mutual aid response to so we could call the fire department for a rescue um and then we and then we would be covered under our osha regulations uh it didn't it didn't pan out the way we wanted to so now we are i've got a couple spaces in here the the raw water and there's another space that has baffles it's almost the same kind of configuration that we've never gone in hopefully never need to <laughs> um but those two spaces I put in here that we would have a rescue team on site, which is life safety specialists. They're a contractor nearby. Unfortunately, they're not um, cheap and they're not always readily available. You know, it might, we might be in a position where um, we can't get that rescue team there and we need to do something. So we wouldn't have to work something out then. But for now, I think this is, this is works okay. Mm -hmm. Have we talked to the insurance company? <laughs> MMA just came by the other day. Yeah, they were just in the building. So they, they walked you through all the... Oh, Mike helped me a lot with okay, this. So he's he, done, him yeah, him yeah. and um, Mike LaPlante are... I mean, they Lance, have free assessments anyway. They Lance should come down. Lemieux Lance Lemieux and Mike LaPlante yep. have been working... They have worked with me for the last six years. Okay. Ever since I was on the safety committee, I've met those people, and I, I picked their brain clean as much as I could. This, they they helped me write all this. I didn't do this by myself. He reviewed it all. <sighs> Any uh, issues, questions? Any no. questions? No. The staff? No. Good. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> so, so we want to make this a, a policy? Yes. So yeah. to adopt this as a policy. Yeah, it, sh it shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do we have a do copy in front yeah, of us? Yeah, I, I would like to read a yeah. copy, I'll see a copy. Do, uh, a signage page for you guys, so our next meeting I'll bring that. Okay. Okay. Yep. There's not a problem. Make the vote official then. There's a copy. Just one that you guys yeah. can Thank you. Yeah. I, if you want, I can email it and send it to Yep. Yep. Thank you. Right. Out. Is, uh, next on the agenda is the Purchase and sales agreement for 70 Sullivan Street, MAP, U003, Lot 97. You wanna yeah, this is a very small parcel uh, that's uh, next to the uh, trail that goes from Sullivan Street to the police uh, and will be fire uh, area. Uh, it was for our access road. And um, we didn't have quite enough footage uh, without getting into some wetlands issue. So we asked um, Mr. Petruzzi um, if he would be willing to sell us a small section. So we had that surveyed under the uh, grant or under the money for the fire station. And it's just a small section. So he was very agreeable to do that. He wanted to just make sure we kept a, he was at a 50 foot right of way up along one his side of his property. So it's the only place he can get into his backyard with any, like a car or a truck. So um, uh, attorneys drafted all this, um, reviewed it, and uh, he had seen, and uh, Dean is his name, Dean Petruzzi, and he was 
very happy with that. Everything is in order. Uh, it's all been surveyed and ready to be broken out into a, a, a deed. Um, so once this transaction takes place, um, we'll have that. And it actually saved us quite a bit of money, I think, in the end, because we don't, we didn't have the well, uh, the wetlands the issue. The wetland issues. Yeah, they goodness. talked about going from a tier yeah. one to a tier two, and how many more thousands of dollars that oh, cost? That would so. have been expensive. And, uh, so this worked out for everybody. Yeah, um, and, and Mr. Petruzzi has been, you know, very willing to work with us. Um, he, he uh, you know, sell, selling the piece to us. The, the price is eight thousand six hundred dollars, six hundred and eight dollars, is uh, which is is uh, he did some uh, square footage pricing for uh, comparable parcels and uh, approximately fifty percent of what the going rate is. So, is for. You know, fifty-six hundred dollars, eighty-six hundred dollars, is uh, it Cheap. makes it a lot easier for us to do our access. Uh, that's good. Mm -hmm. So, okay. and helps his house is right next door. So. Right. Yeah. I noticed they're putting the foundation in that the lot right next to it. Oh, are they really? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of wet there. She's. I guess so, huh? <laughs> and hasn't picked up on that one. Yeah. yeah. So, um, <coughs> so we need a motion to uh, go ahead with this purchase. And sales agreement? I'll make a motion that we approve the purchase and sales agreement for 70 Sullivan Street, map U003, lot 9-7. A second. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Thank you. Next up is the award for the Estabrook demolition bids. Long time coming. We uh, had advertised that back in April um, and we had one person bid uh, <coughs> or came out to the, the mandatory pre-bid uh, meeting um, and we uh, contacted them after we decided that we needed to go back out uh, and try to see if we could get some more competitive bids. He didn't submit anything so and in fact he didn't submit anything even on the second time around so um, I'm not sure why but we had two bidders uh, one from New Hampshire and, and one from Maine. Um, quite a bit of difference in mm -hmm. prices. Uh, but my recommendation would be to go with uh, Renault uh, Industries uh, for the demolition. Uh, any questions of Steve? No. Um, did they have any indication how soon they could proceed? We will not. We. They would like to get started as soon as possible, but we have a meeting on Thursday on the fire station and the electrical engineer is coming and uh, Roland is coming to that meeting as well to kind of get a better idea of what, because uh, he's been working, the engineer has been working with CMP about get the power. poles and all that. So I'm hoping on Thursday, I told both bidders that uh, they'd probably hear from me after this week, after that meeting, so I could kind of give them direction when we could start. Is, um, <coughs> and you know, doing a walkthrough with the building is um, th there's only a, a few things in there that I would consider worth saving. Is uh, I'm going to be looking for some help for volunteers. Is I want to <laughs> take all the uh, old school lights out of there, the the pendant globes. I think there's approximately 70 of them. And uh, I also want to see about getting the slate blackboards. Out. Yeah, yeah, that'd be a good idea. Yep. Is, uh, sure. So, mm -hmm. is we'll be we'll be looking we'll be looking to uh, Put the blackboards in your barn. <laughs> we'll talk about it during the public. We can trade some off. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, is do we have a motion to award the demolition bid? I'll make a motion to award the demolition bid for the Estabrook. School to Renault Industries LCC for a sum of nine ninety seven thousand eight hundred dollars. Any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Thank you. So that brings us to our paving bids. We uh, have two paving bids, um, one from Libby Scott and one from Pike Industries. Um, there's quite a bit of a difference in price, um, and when you total up the price of, um, Pike was over a million dollars to do the same work, um, uh, the 
Libby Scott was um, $814,000 change. We only had 600000 to play with. So uh, but what I had asked them to do is to give me a uh, cost of putting the t travel layers on some of the new roads that we're working on. So that got added into the top. So we'll have to back some of that out and, uh, and uh, spend what we have. And that's it. So right, now Steve, how, <clears throat> why can't we put this out? So 2020 paving bid next winter. So that we'll put, we put it out to bid now, and the prices, everyone's got their belly full, so the prices are right up, is one thing, right? But if we bid it in the early spring, I know for myself, there's plenty of work I got this past winter and spring that I'd like to say forget it now, and go get some other work, because there's so much more of it out there and there's more money in it. So why don't we, how can we do that? We know we're gonna get appropriated so much money. You may- You can always put it to bid. If you, on the bid sheets, what they did, these are, estimated amounts right because and you'll get the same thing when you put it out in spring because they don't really know until the season gets closer what they're going to be paying for oil and everybody gets their hot top from pike so if pike will set the price i think if, if just before they started opening the plant this year they, the plant opened probably about three weeks later than normal because of the weather so we can i, I don't mind doing it earlier well, yeah, right. We, at least we can. Uh, well, I bet you we'll get it cheaper because everyone likes to get their belly full. Yeah. For the we hit the run, road run in the spring, and if right. we're always cheaper. Mm -hmm. the, the same the, job, I'm going to be more money on now than I would have been three months ago. <clears throat> I'm not sure it's the same with paving, but I, I oh, would definitely is. send it out in the spring, is. early well, spring or late winter. So, no paving this year is what you're saying. No. Is, no. Uh, you know that that's what he's he's saying. You know, delay this until next year. I said no. I didn't say that now. Oh. No, no. Uh, We're gonna have to buy out what we have the budget for, right? But then next year, we can put it out to bid uh, earlier. Earlier, we don't we can't right. award it until the we know the money's coming in at town meeting. But still, at least we can know we got it. Okay, you got the job. It'll be voted in the spring. Same way we did the goddamn fire station. No. We didn't wait to get the money before we bid it, right? Yeah. We bid it last summer. Yeah, last winter. We bid it after we got the approval to do right, it. Right, right. Yeah. And the bomb was just a matter of waiting for that whole thing. By the right. way, it's six million dollars is in the bank last week, so <laughs> it's encouraging to extra money. So, uh, yeah, I can I can definitely do that. I, it's, so. I'm not sure it will make a difference. I've never seen it make a difference, but I can definitely do it. Okay. Try it. So, um, <clears throat> so we have a motion to award the bid to Libby Scott. We I know. Do have a question yeah. because the bid came in at eight hundred thousand, a little over eight hundred thousand, yeah, we, but we'll we're only budgeted for six hundred thousand. Well, it, it cut it back. Do we do we make the motion for six hundred thousand? Yeah, that's, that's yes. what I would do. Okay, yeah. Yeah. is that 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 way? You no, know, we're we're authorizing up to spending up to that amount, nothing more. So it's not not as if we're. Mm -hmm. yeah, you have to the raise the six hundred thousand. You have about a hundred and forty thousand in the reserve account right now. But I always like to keep that. That's for other things besides just yeah, paving. salt and sand every winter. No, <laughs> that's different. That's, that has its own line. So what do we call? So what are we going to call it? How much money? Six hundred thousand? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I'll make the motion to award the bi paving bid to Libby Scott to pave up to six hundred thousand oh. as budgeted. I'll second it. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Thank you. <coughs> So that brings us to rescheduling our June 11th meeting. Uh, June 11th is the election day. Election day. So we typically don't have it. We had talked about <coughs> is rescheduling it to maybe next week. Um, but then is uh, will I correct, Steve? You're going to be gone the last week of June too. That. It's planned, but I I might. Yeah. We'll I'm, I'm, I'm going to be out of I'm going to be out of town. I have put in for the time. Week. I have the time. I haven't made so definitive air flight plans and all that kind of stuff. I, I sent out the email earlier, you know, possible of having just one meeting in June on the 18th, is that's when we wanted to have the workshop yeah. with 18. everybody else. Yeah. Um, <coughs> I don't know, you know that far out what we have on an agenda is, you know, the election will be good. over, so that's all taken care of. Yeah. You know, the budget's all taken care of. It shouldn't be 
It should be pretty light. The only thing I ask is if you get a call from Jack about coming in and signing the warrants, just so we can pay the bills. Pay the bills. <laughs> just I think I need just three. Yeah, we can. It's no problem to come in. No, just I know. I'm just saying. It. Yeah. Yeah, I need three. You get a point to come in um, and sign that, and yep. we can distribute the money. But otherwise, that's fine. And we'll have an opportunity to. Uh, if we have anything on the 18th that we need to talk about ahead of time, we can, yep. I think I've scheduled a meeting for six o'clock. It's <laughs> a workshop, so we can talk about whatever we want. <laughs> so we're we good. Can't vote on anything. 18th is what it'll be. 18th. 18th. Yeah. Nothing on the 25th. Nope. Nothing on the 25th. No. Nope. Yeah, and we'll see you again Motorcycle after ride. that. We'll see you where. In the mountains. That's my on my. In July what? Uh, what's the, the next meeting? Will be July, July what, July, Patty? July 9th. July 9th. July 9th, yeah. Oh, peachy. All right. <clears throat> so that's the 18th, okay. Um, we have no quick claim deeds or installments. Uh, we do have the abatement. No, this is held over from our last meeting. Is, um, they, we had already granted an abatement for one year as the gentleman had come in and wanted us to go back three years. Now he explained the situation to us. Um, <clears throat> we don't typically go back three years. We do do the one year. And uh, is, I'd hate to be setting the precedent. Mm -hmm. is, um, <clears throat> and um, so I'm going to make a motion that we deny the abatement. Second? I'll second it. Any discussion? I do have a question. We were going to, uh, from last meeting, we were going to talk to the assessor. Did we get anything from them with a well, recommendation? Because Monday was the holiday, they weren't here. Well, he wanted to go back. He wanted to do the, um, go back three years, right? Yeah. The, the assessor didn't. Oh, the assessor, the assessor didn't? Can't. No. No, the assessor recommended that we deny. Deny. Oh, I okay. That, okay. That's what I was looking yeah. for. Is, okay. Is, I didn't there, think they made a recommendation, was a recommendation the last time, did the they? Assessor. If you want something in writing, Karen will be in tomorrow. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So we're going to put it in writing. we got to keep it at one year. Yeah. yeah. So do you want to table this until you get something for No. No, I'm, I'm oh. comfortable. Okay. So we have a motion in a second. Right. All those in favor? Yeah. Thank you. That brings us to our second public comment. If you have public comment, step to the podium. Give us, the, give us your, 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 your name and... Age before beauty. <laughs> uh, Paul Bovier, Black Prairie Hill. Uh, two things on the um, item on the purchase and sale agreement for the 70 Sullivan Street map U3 lot 9-7. Um, this is being voted on June 9th, but the town itself does not have uh, the conditional use approval yet and probably won't have it by June 9th. And I would think, and Nicole can chime in as a real estate person, that, that there should be some kind of a stipulation in the purchase and sale agreement that it's, it's pending uh, the planning board approval for the, for the plans for the fire department. That's number one. You make sure the language, mm -hmm. uh, let's say, for example, something happens and that falls through and you're on the hook for purchase and sale. Why would it fall through? Hmm? Why would it fall through? I don't know, but it's put well, in the It's your job to make sure it doesn't fall through. <laughs> I'll do my best. I'll well, do I'm my best, it. Mark. But just make sure the language covers that point. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Uh, and the other thing is that there's a, there's a scuttlebutt out there that this is not clear because what, what I read here is purchase and sale agreement for 70 Sullivan Street, map U3, lot 9-7. That, to me, the language implies you're buying the whole lot. No, it should be a part of that lot. And there is noise on the street that we're buying the Wedgwood Tavern. That is Beautiful. Um, you can use it in the tavern, Tom. Why not? <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> you, you know, but when you read it, you know, <laughs> so like there's that. some very misinformed people out there. That oh, it's awful. Buying, you know, and it has it's something to do with like the parking lot the street or in the survey, it's been done. Yeah, it's, it's been very clearly just just defined. a word of warning. Mm -hmm. Say part of. Yeah. And okay. legal has gone through it and, and drawn up all this paperwork for it, so it's it's been looked at. Yeah, very carefully. Make sure that the, the whole town knows yeah. what it is we're buying yeah. 
we're yeah. and why we're buying it. Yeah, it's the public that doesn't know. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be clear in the minutes. <laughs> You're assuming they read the minutes, Patty. <laughs> Other than that, everything's great. That's Thank good. You. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other public comment? No? Um, I, I, I'm just going to mention it is tonight is Rebecca's last meeting with us. She declined to run again, much as we encouraged her. <laughs> as it's been a pleasure serving with you for three years. Thank you, likewise. As, uh, you've been a great addition, and we're going to miss you. As I uh, <clears throat> hope that is, uh, in the future you can see your way back here sometime. I definitely, yes, absolutely. Yep. Everybody heard her on, pu on public <laughs> She's coming back. I don't know. <laughs> in the future. If, 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 if not with here, but no, continue absolutely. activity in the oh, town. Absolutely, absolutely. So, no, thank you. It's been great. No, uh, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have no executive session. No. We do have other business. Other business. Oh, we do have other business. Yeah, recreation impact fees. I didn't get it on the agenda. Um, I had all the bills put in, but we were able to use some of the funding from the recreation uh, budget for a lot of it. The only thing we were requesting is $5,700 to pay for the complete roofing job that they did on the building. On the main building? Yeah, that's it. So, is, uh, you want that voted on now? I want to vote that. 5700 yeah. even? Yeah, that was for our hall roofing. They did a very fair. Is that 67 or 57? 57. 57. 57. 57. Um, I'll make a motion that we appropriate $5,700 out of the recreation impact fees to pay for the roofing that was done on the building at the recreation field. Second. Awesome. Any discussion? No. All those in favor? Thank you. Mark, are you in favor? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, any other business? Non-agenda no. items? No. 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 Uh, that leaves one motion. Motion to adjourn. I'll second. All those in favor? Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.